perspective. I'd like to recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Dodaro, um, just to slightly revisit the issue of state waivers uh, from a different angle, um, was, as was mentioned earlier, uh, I believe by one of my colleagues, uh, referencing the GAO uh, report back in March of 2021. Uh, in that report, you had discussed um, the issue of overpayments uh, with the PUA program. And the report said, um, uh, keying in on one provision there, the, said the DOL did not have plans to collect data on states utilizing authority to waive um, pandemic unemployment assistance overpayments uh, or the amount of overpayments that the states may have waived. Um, obviously, it's concerning that the exact amount of loss uh, due to fraud is not known for the reasons we discussed earlier. Um, but just uh, as far as having no information about states waiving over payments, uh, some of which may have been fraud, um, don't you believe that that information is in fact needed to effectively monitor um, and ultimately recover these overpayments? Yeah, absolutely. We recommended that the Labor Department require uh, the states to report how much money they've recovered, how much they've waived as well. And so I'm always wary of waivers. And uh, I think it's important that uh, the uh, Labor Department have accurate information from the states to monitor that effort. And any suggestion on a remedy there moving forward? Well, there just needs to be required reporting of that. I think that's just proper management of the program. Uh, to be able to do that, and the, and the department ought to follow up with the states. And I think it's also appropriate to either have the state auditors or perhaps at the federal level, one of us do a sample of the waivers to make sure they were adequately supported uh, during the process. So there, do you, there needs do you have to the be manpower to do that? No, but uh, we could find some way to figure out how to do it. But somebody ought to do it. I think it's state auditors would be the best position to do that. In fact, I don't think the federal government uses state auditors as effectively as possible for either the unemployment insurance program or the Medicaid program, for that matter, because each state system is a little different. Right. Um, Mr. Turner, uh, in your testimony, you had um, uh, updated your estimate of improper payments uh, from roughly $163 billion to $191 billion, uh, with a significant um, portion attributable to fraud. Um, your esti uh, estimate uses DOL's reported improper payment rate of about 21.5% for fiscal year 2022. Um, understanding Mr. Horowitz's uh, well-made point that tracking this stuff is incredibly difficult once it leaves our shores, it does require cooperation with foreign governments. It's incredibly challenging. Nonetheless, I think it exposes a massive vulnerability uh, in our own system. Uh, to allow it to, to leave our shores uh, in the first place. But um, to the extent you haven't addressed this yet, sir, uh, explaining why your estimate is so substantially different uh, from the administration's uh, estimate of $104 billion. Well, again, we take our uh, rate from the department, uh, and based on what the department gave us, the 21.5, that's how we end up calculating it, the 191. So, uh, and that's, they're the ones that's responsible as the policy uh, uh, owners to provide that rate, so uh, we can't we can't develop it ourselves. Has there been any discussion with the administration of reconciling these numbers? Uh, no, there has not been. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Representative.